Hey everybody, Jem Schofield here and welcome to the Canon EOS C100 video tutorial series. In this video, we're going to be talking about setting up the camera and getting ready for shooting. So we're going to jump right into the menu systems. Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing you should know is that the two things that you're going to be using the most when you navigate the menu systems on the C100 are the menu button over here on the camera body and this on the grip unit which is called the joystick. So we'll be using those in combination. I'm going to actually press the menu button now and that's going to bring up the main menu system on the camera and I'm going to go over here to the grip unit and I'm going to use the joystick. I'm going to go down one into the camera setup menu and when we're in the camera setup menu I'm going to just go through some of the key parameters in the camera system that you should be thinking about when you're setting this thing up. So light metering, most of the time we're going to leave that on standard as a setting, but if I press in on the joystick, we can see that there's backlight as an option. If you're shooting a backlit scene, we also have spotlight so that if you have something that's in frame that's being lit by a single light source, you may want to choose that. Standard is what you, again, would use in most situations. It's a center weighted that's going to be giving preference to the center of the frame. So we're going to go down here to ISO and gain. Now depending on how you like to use a camera system, if you're used to measuring your camera sensitivity and you're coming from a standard video camcorder, maybe an ENG camera, we can set that to gain. If you're used to using a DSLR or a digital cinema camera or a cinema camera, then you'll use ISO. We're going to leave it on ISO for right now. Uh, ISO increment, we can set that to one third of a stop or to full stop increments. We'll leave it on one third so we can be more precise with our ISO. So the next menu item is iris. We're going to go into that and take a look at iris increment. We can actually set that to half stop, the default, which is one third of a stop, or we can even choose on this camera something called fine. As you're changing your aperture on your lens using the little dial on the grip unit, it will actually do it in finer increments than one third of a stop, though your readout on your LCD or on your EVF will actually be in one third stop increments. So now we're going to go ahead and take a look at the shutter options. When we go into that menu, you will see that we have mode as our first parameter. When we go in there, there's a lot of options inside of here. I want to talk about the first three. Shutter speed may be something you're familiar with if you're coming from a DSLR background, and that's the default in terms of the way the camera's set. And I'm going to step out of the menu for a second and just show you on the main screen here, you'll see that we have shutter speed. And at the moment, I have that set to a 148th. Now I'm shooting with the camera at 24 frames per second. And in order to get that film look, that thing that we associate with a cinematic look and feel, we like to expose each of our frames for exactly half the amount of time. So if we're shooting at 24 frames per second, we would lock that in at a 48th. If we were shooting at 30 frames per second, then we would change that to a 60th. Now, I'm going to go back in here to the menu and change this mode now to angle and step out of the menu. And when we look here, we'll now see that we have an angle reading for the shutter as opposed to a shutter speed. And if we wanted to expose each of the frames at 24 frames per second for half the time based on shutter angle, we basically have a 360 degree exposure. If it was 360, we would be exposing it for the whole time. So half of that time would be 180 degree shutter angle. Most people who are coming from a cinema background will actually set up the camera to shutter angle as opposed to shutter speed. It's up to you how you want to set it up. But one advantage to using shutter angle is as you change your frame rates in your camera system, the shutter angle will stay the same. So if you're shooting at 30 frames per second, the shutter angle will stay at 180 degrees and it will expose each of your frames for half the amount of time. Now we're going to take a look at clear scan. This shutter mode will actually allow you to set the frequency in order to record CRT computer monitors so you don't see black bands or flicker on the screen so that when you're shooting under certain lighting conditions and you're seeing flicker or you're seeing scan lines, you can dial in the camera very, very specifically so you can eliminate those things. There's also a flicker reduction feature, which when turned on will automatically detect and reduce flicker under certain shooting situations. Now CP Cinema Locked. This is a mode inside of the camera system that if you turn it on, you will see a significant difference in terms of your image. It is based on the Canon Log Gamma Curve, and it is a way to basically 
lock down your camera system into shooting a very, very flat picture that's very gradable in post-production. And it's an option that some people will like to use, especially when they're using a multi-camera situation and they want to take a whole bunch of cameras and very, very quickly match them. You can go in here and turn on Cinema Locked and that will allow you to shoot with all of the cameras with all of the same locked settings. And then you can go in there and just make sure after that that you have the same frame rate, the same shutter, and those types of things, white balance, and then away you go. But remember, when you use that feature, this Cinema Locked mode, you are going to have to grade the picture in post-production. So it's not ideal when you want to go ahead and edit something and send it out to the world right away. So we've turned off CP Cinema Locked and we're now going to go down to ABB, which stands for Automatic Black Balance. And we want to do this anytime we're shooting with the camera. Let's say you're taking out the camera for a shoot. You want to go ahead and do an ABB in the environment you're in. Anytime you're changing an environment, it's just a good idea to make sure that you do it. And what you'll need to do that is a body cap on the camera. And we're going to go ahead and attach that and then we'll go into the menu and it'll say attach a body cap and then there's an OK and we'll go over to OK and we'll activate that and then it will cycle through a process where it's black balancing the camera system. Again, if you're doing a multi-camera shoot, you want to do this to each of your cameras. It's one of the first steps. It should be part of your checklist whenever you're using the camera to do an ABB. And if you're shooting on a long production day, let's say you're shooting for eight or nine hours, make sure that you do an ABB a couple of times during the day. And we'll go ahead and click OK. And then we're just going to cycle through here. I'm going to take a look at one other option in the camera setup menu, which is called peripheral illumination correction. There are going to be situations where you may have fall off in a frame. And if you see here, if I go into this menu, if you're using a Canon EF lens and it recognizes the lens, we can go in here and see that in this menu and we can turn this feature on in the camera system. This is the uh, EF24-105 F4L IS lens, and we'll just turn that on, and now the camera will automatically compensate for that fall off or that peripheral illumination change inside of the camera, which is a great feature. So now we're gonna jump into the audio setup menu, and we're gonna go over to audio input. We'll jump in here, and we have at the moment the internal microphone on which is here in the handle unit and what we're going to do is take a look at these settings the first one is a low cut setting sometimes called a high pass filter and what low cut does is it basically lets the high frequencies through and then it basically lets some of the lower frequencies that are down there fall off so that you don't hear them uh, by default it's off if we go to LC or low cut one this is better for when you have low frequencies that might be getting in the way of people's voices when you're recording people's voices. LC2 is really when you're in windy conditions. You might be by a beach or by a building and you're hearing some things. Uh, but it can, in fact, get rid of some of the other frequencies there. So make sure you are monitoring your signal. We're going to set that back to off. Mic sensitivity, you're not getting the levels that you want you could go from normal to high. Not necessary in most situations, but there is an option for that. And then we have something called mic internal, mic attenuation. So if you're using this feature with the built-in microphone that's part of the handle unit, it's going to attenuate that by 12 decibels. If you're using the external microphone, it's going to do an attenuation with your setting on mic, not on line level or plus 48, but on mic of a 20 decibel change. And then I'm going to scroll down here and there's one other option I want to show you which is called the limiter. There are situations where you're going to be recording audio and you're not going to know what's going to happen with the person or the talent that you're going to have on camera. And they may be a very, very dynamic speaker. So they may start off very softly and then they start to speak a little bit louder and then they may start to speak very loudly when they get excited. A limiter is sort of your safety. When you turn it on, it creates a little ceiling because it's zero on an audio meter, if we go above that, we clip our audio. So the limiter basically clamps down the audio when it starts to get near zero to make sure that we don't have clipping in our signal. Okay, so we're gonna jump in now. I've turned on this external shotgun microphone, and when we go into the audio input menu, you'll see that our parameters have changed. We're no longer seeing the options for the internal microphone, but just to show you guys, if I go over here on the side of the camera, and I change one of my channels to internal, then those options for that handle 
unit's microphone will in fact light up so we can actually make changes to that as well. At the moment we want to just concentrate on an external microphone so I'm going to scroll down here and we can actually make some pretty specific decisions in terms of what we're doing. The first one here is XLR record channel. We can actually decide when we're recording in this situation we have one shotgun going into channel one. Do we want that to record to just channel one or do we want it to record to both channels on the camera system? If we choose channel one, channel two, then it's going to lay down that audio to both channel one and channel two. And if you're only using one microphone, then that may be something that you want to do. Then we go in here, we have mic trimming. This is going to give us the ability to change the decibel level of the microphone that we're using. And I can tell you from personal experience, this is something that I use very often times when I'm using wireless microphone systems where I have a wireless receiver that's plugged into one of the XLR inputs and then I have a wireless transmitter and I go in here and actually tweak that level here by using the mic trimming. Now over here we have mic trimming for XLR2 and then we do have an attenuation option for XLR1 and XLR2 so we can actually activate that attenuation if we want and that's an overview of the audio input features for the C100. All right, so we're going to take a look at this video setup menu very quickly here. This is important because if you are using an external monitor or an external recorder that has a display, you may want to actually see the characters show up. And in fact, just like any good cooking show, I have an external monitor here. And let me show you what the options are. So character display, if I change it to VF, that's only going to display in the viewfinder inside the camera system or on the LCD screen. But if I choose again external out, then it's going to push those menu items here to an external display. The other thing that you have to do is you have to turn on the on-screen display. And you'll see here it says HD on-screen display. If I turn that off, then it disappears. If I turn it on, then I'll actually see those in my signal. In setting up for shooting part two, we're going to talk about time code, the other functions menu, and I'm going to introduce you to the custom picture menu on the C100.